How are you doing, folks? How are you doing, guys? You're very welcome. Uh, thanks for tuning into the channel. My name is Morgan O'Flaherty. Um, got this brilliant opportunity to speak to some fantastic people about some fantastic machinery, farming, whatnot, whatever. I'm doing MSK YouTube. I'm looking at the screen down here, but the, the camera's actually up there. So if you see me, it's not because of that, it's because of anything else. Um, this evening, we get the chance to speak to a man in the UK by the name of Richard Carnock. Um, otherwise known as AKA the Funky Farmer. Now Richard covers everything, he's brilliant. I reached out to Richard and he came back to me, no problem, delighted to help me out. Um, I suppose look, he covers everything, just from putting a chicken coop together to milking cows, to letting cows out in the field. Uh, one of his first videos to hit um, a million views was when he left just leaving cows out after the, being inside all winter. Even the mode, same running around the pasture. Brilliant. Fantastic. People love it. Brilliant. Um, I got a chance to speak to Richard, and um, Richard, absolute gentleman, couldn't, couldn't um, praise him enough. Um, but that's it. Look, this is what Richard to say. Give a look, give a subscribe, give a like um, to my videos. Get on to the podcast as well, Marvin O'Flaherty Country Life. The full episode of Richard will be also on that. Be available, Marvin O'Flaherty Country Life. Hit like, hit subscribe on this video, and uh, this is what Richard has to say. Period. Well, great. It's a video. Richard, how are you doing? All right. Nice to meet you. Brilliant. Nice Richard, you. for people that, that do well, there's a lot more people know you than they know me. You're Richard Carnock, the AKA the Funky Farmer. <laughs> I, yeah, that's what they call me. That's what they call <laughs> you. That's, I suppose, Richard, first of all, I'm wondering myself, and a lot of people probably are wondering, the Funky Farmer, where did the, the name, the name? The, yeah, oh, where, did, where did the name come from? Oh, that's, it's a name I used way before YouTube, I, I um, just used a bit of fun, I used to just sign off the Funky Farmer, because obviously when you're younger you did a little bit more dancing and drinking and stuff, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, but now I just rolled it onto YouTube, and, and probably I am a little bit different in the fact that I'm a bit of a, I like a bit of a joke, and a, I do dance on top of tractor roofs occasionally, so I think the Funky Farmer is quite apt, really. yeah. other people do. Yeah, I actually saw that, actually, and I saw like one of your, your YouTube videos, and you were um, dancing off the top of the roof of a Massey Ferguson tractor. Which, like, was I've done it a few times. Yeah. I've, I've danced off the roof of the local TV news, actually. I did it once... Um, uh, they did a, a Christmas video of people in, in the area along to Shaken Stevens. So I got on top yeah. of the tra tractor roof and had tinsel around my neck dancing to it. And they put me into this, this video. But uh, I have to say, as I'm getting older, it's hard to climb on the tractor roof. Yeah, I'll end yeah. up with just a bonnet next time. Yeah, yeah. You have, you have to get the step ladder. The height, you have to get the step ladder with the eight steps. <laughs> I did use a step ladder. But it's blooming high on a tractor roof when you get up there. Yeah, and it's you, a bit, you it's it's only a small space. Don't fall off anyway. It is. That's like you've done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But tell anyway. me, Richard, I was you look your 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 YouTube channel is very very successful. You were over a hundred thousand subscribers. But like, what gave you the inspiration? I suppose what, where was the idea behind this just to start? Uh, it's quite funny actually because. Um, it was almost by accident. Well, it was by accident. I didn't intend to start YouTubing. What happened? I'll tell you. So, 10 years ago, I had a book published called A Year on a Dairy Farm. Um, it's out of print now, but there's a couple of, I think it might be on eBay or something. Um, what I did for a year, 2000, well, it's actually 2009, the story goes back to me. 2009, I carried a camera with me on, my, on the farm for a year in my top pocket, a digital camera. I photographed. Um, the year on the farm with these pictures and i put it into a book which i gave to mum and dad for christmas and after that a lot of people said you should get it published and i thought yeah right okay yeah but anyway there was a local publisher near me and i approached them with this idea and they they said brilliant we love it we'd like to publish it as a book so in 2010 a year on a dairy farm came out so i did that and then i thought right okay it'd be quite a nice idea to do some dvds of a year on a dairy farm based yeah. on our farm so i then bought a digital camera and um i carried that with me for a year on the farm and at the end of 2011 i'd amassed a massive amount of video yeah and 
it was at that point I realized it was totally impractical to do a DVD because I would have needed a box set about a mile long because there was yeah. so much footage. And, you know, I mean, this is going back 10 years ago when DVDs were more popular than mm-hmm. streaming, if you like. People didn't have broadband in the same way as they have now. Um, so I then thought, I turned this on his head. I thought, right, I'm not going to be able to do a DVD. I thought, right, do you know what? Why don't I upload some of these videos to YouTube primarily for my children to see because i thought actually it was quite a nice thing for them to watch because at the time i wasn't living on the farm so i thought it was quite nice for my kids to watch it on youtube and so i started all uploading them the year after i'd filmed them so i filmed 2010 i started uploading january 2011 in the sequence i'd filmed them so going through the year and i wasn't planning to be this youtube personality if you like i was just doing videos and in fact, I didn't appear in the early videos. I just filmed and maybe gave a bit of a commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gradually got sort of traction. People started picking up views and stuff. I was quite surprised because it wasn't intentional. Um, luckily, I chose the name The Funky Farmer and I haven't had to, at the start because I haven't had to change it. You know, yeah. it's what I called myself 10 years ago. Um, and then it's rolled on from there and it's, it's developed into some very interesting little projects. And I've, I'm quite proud that I'd be able to do some things like I've been able to help people some businesses and some you know out of charities and things like that through the way and just do some fun stuff it's been a pleasure to do it but also i've been you know to help people also it's it's made life on the farm much more interesting for me because anyone who knows what it's like to work on a farm will realize it's actually quite a solitary lonely job yeah. and you know you know you hear about the, the about mental health issues and stuff i'm not saying i've got mental health issues, problems but i'm just saying it helps for me in the fact that I, it gives me an outlet away from the farm, communicate with other people, and some interesting interaction with people, which you don't get when you're solitary working on a farm. No, you don't. Like you said, farming farming can be very, very boring. Like, you know, I won't call it boring, but very, very lonely. And a lot of times, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Like, well, it, you know, it's the same. Although the seasons are very different, it's the same thing. I know that. In a month's time, we'll be silage making. I know the hay making is coming in sort of end of June. You know, I kind of know my cycle of what I'm doing. I've been doing it a very long time. So, yeah. you know, and this breaks up this, the flow of that monotony in some way, because some of it is monotonous. It's, you know, repetitive work, hard work. Yeah, very, very hard work and very, very long hours as well involved. Yeah. Yeah. But Richard, I suppose... We'll say when you, like, obviously when you started out, you said it was only kind of a plan for your kids to be able to see what you were doing and what not. Mm. But, like, yeah, did it come, I suppose, when you said, did you get far when you got followers and you got subscribers, was it, did it come as a shock to the system that people are watching well, me? And are doing... Massive shock. Massive shock, because there is a video somewhere on YouTube um, going back where I did a thank you video when I reached 500 viewers. Um, and and I look at that now and go, my God, that was, I think I'm on about 133,000 subscribers now. Yeah. Um, and and you just don't realise when you're starting on 500 that you, where you're going to end up. And there is no plan to get where I am now. I, you know, it's just luck, really. I, mm-hmm. you know, there's plenty of other better YouTubers out there than me. I honestly, I honestly mean this. There's better YouTubers out there than me that make better content than me that haven't got the subscriber base. But then maybe that just comes with time. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Next year will be my 10th year of YouTubing. So, you know, I, I'd say for encouragement purposes, anyone who's having a go, don't look at the fact you've got two subscribers. Look at where you might be in 10 yeah. years' time. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and don't do it for subscribers or views. Do it because you enjoy it. Because that's the one key thing I have to say, that I do it because I enjoy it. I'm not driven by getting views on my videos or, you know, how many subscribers I've got. I do it because I really enjoy it. I did some videos back in January. I went to a local farm shop and I went to a local butcher's to buy yeah. some stuff, buy some meat for Make It Meat Monday thing. And do you know what? I absolutely loved it. I went to interview them. They gave me a tour of the farm shop, showed me the local produce. That side of things like that, I really enjoyed that interview type thing and stuff like that, you know. And and also when I sit back and finish making a video, it doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes I just sit back and I just go, do you know what? That's a really nice little video. And and from my point of view as well, 
perhaps there's two most important things I like doing is the fact that I'm recording the history of my farm. And I wish, yeah. can you imagine if there'd been you a hundred years ago and my great, because this farm, we've had this farm 199 years now. Brilliant. Can you imagine if, if my great grandfather had been out there with his shire horses and done <laughs> two videos there? What yeah. amazing thing that would have been. So I'm recording history, but mm. also I'm recording my children growing up on the farm and, and their life. And it's a lovely thing. So I've got a video of my dad who's now died, died five years ago. Got a video of my son Harry having his first day on the farm with my with my dad. Brilliant. Um, because we lived on the farm and I drove to the farm with my son Harry at six o'clock in the morning. My dad's moving the electric fence. And memories like that, they're irreplaceable. You can't, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. My message my message to anyone who's doing a YouTube video, do it because you love it, not because you think yeah. I want to be a celebrity yeah, or a yeah. famous. It's yeah. not about that. For me, it's not anyway. Yeah, do you know, but like I find some of your videos, Richard, you know. Like, I've watched plenty of dairies and stuff. I watched one of your videos there, going back a while ago, I know, and if you were just inside washing your milking parlor. Oh, yeah. Just as simple as that. But, you know, I know. You, you were just washing it with a brush and just dusting it down. You know, it was perfect. It was just, I don't know, was it the way you spoke or was it the way you talked about what you were doing, but you just made it sound so interesting. You know, you <laughs> just did like, you know. Funny, isn't it? It's funny, isn't it? What you watch on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I'm the same as everyone else. I click on a video and I, it's not the obvious stuff you think people yeah. would, would come yeah. to, isn't it? You know? Yeah. I, and some of it's about engaging with the person who's doing it. Some of it's about the content and everything like that, really, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like there was another video you done uh, very recently. It was putting up the chicken coop and you were fox proofing it. You know, like, oh, yeah. I think it was a, was a three segments to it. And I ended up waiting for the third segment. Come on, come on, come on. You know, I knew what you were doing. I knew what you were going to do. You know, it was just... It, I, I find those very satisfying, those sort of videos where I try and build something or create something. I did one a while back where uh, I restored an old Norton trailer that um, I bought off a friend of mine, Farmer P. Mm -hmm. And I rubbed all the rust off it and I sanded it down and I filled it and had some welding done on it and I painted it and do you know what it's a lovely project I do like those sort of project videos if you like where it goes through yeah. sometimes it's very hard to do these videos because I'm on my own and the problem is it's very easy to hold a camera and film yourself yeah. but when you actually have to try and do something and film yeah you probably might notice as well if I do something with my children sometimes that's a bit chaotic yeah 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 warm to it. they're not so Sometimes it can be a bit, oh my God, just stop. I've got to film this bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it'll go yeah. back. But that doesn't matter. That's all part of life, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Are you a bit very good at editing or have you a lot of patience? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I do basic editing. I use very basic software. I use Microsoft uh, Movie Maker, which came free with the computer oh, yeah. on, I'm zooming. Uh, and also, I've got my camcorder plugged in at the moment, but I use a, a cheap camcorder as well. I use a little Sony camcorder. Um, I'm probably a bit different from a lot of people in the fact that I use a camcorder. A lot of people use sort of GoPros and stuff. Yeah. But I've always liked camcorders because of the zoom on it. Mm -hmm. I find that it's very useful for um, zooming, you know, some things a long way away. Um, and also I use what I do, I believe it or not, I use secondhand camcorders because I tend to destroy them on the farm. Yeah. And the, real, the reason I destroy them is the dust gets into them. Mm -hmm. And that's something I can't really stop. And it really messes up on the lens. It creates dots and stuff. Yeah. So I tend to use cheap second-hand ones because otherwise, if I had really expensive equipment, it'd just get trashed. Same I think the know. GoPros are probably not as prone to that. Yeah. But the camcorders, they, they seem to get the dust in the lenses. And I've gone through quite a few that I've had to just dump because they just the dust gets in them. Too expensive to repair them. Yeah, but that's okay too, yeah. Do you know, like, well, it is, isn't it? You know? It's the same thing. I think that. everyone's got to... Everyone who does YouTube has got to find their own way of doing things, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find your There's own no rule. Your own thing and hopefully it'll work for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Richard, I suppose, like, some of your video, like, anyone that hasn't watched it, it's basically what you cover. It's, it's kind of life on the farm. It's life on, it's yeah. life on a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. And there could be anything covered in the videos. Like, 
one of your, I suppose we call it your more successful videos is the, you know, you, you, you spoke about it there recently, it had a million views on it. And it was just the one leaving the cows out into the field. Yeah, Do that's you know a really popular one. Yeah. I mean, I'll be doing that soon, but it's when the cows go out um, at the start of the year, usually sort of beginning of April, mid-April, a bit later this year, um, the cows run down a track to the field. We always put them in the same little paddock at the start of the year because it, you know, gives them the scope to run all over it without having an electric fence and yeah. electric trash. So they go into this little paddock. And because of the way it, the track is, they're sort of funneled into it. So when they come out, they're like fish. They come out and they go... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, they, and yeah. then they, they act like a shoal of fish, actually. They do. Yeah. They, they, they come into the field and they go up the field like that. And then they sort of take a bit of a... And then they go round the other way and they go... Yeah. And that video um, has had loads of views. Uh, and I, I can see why, actually, because it is a very nice video to watch. I think that was filmed in about 2013, actually. Yeah. It's a really early one. Yeah. And I film, I film it every year since then. And that the others don't get anywhere near the views. But yeah. that one there has specifically got over a million. I'm not sure how many. Yeah. It's kind of just one of those feel-good videos. It know? is. It is. Because at one point, I think a couple of the cows take off. <laughs> True, yeah. They're so excited to get yeah. out yeah. You know, it's a bit like when we all go to the pub, when the pub's open after <laughs> yeah, lockdown. Yeah, yeah. We're all going to be right in that yeah. bar, aren't we? Hey, the road running. Oh, no, mine's a bike. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. kind of like that. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll be all fighting about the first round is on me. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's one of those just feel good videos. Anyone that's, anyone should go on and watch it. And just you'll find us, and it's well, we all need a bit of feel good this time of year, don't we? I think we do, yeah, we do, yeah, for definite, for definite. And Richard, I suppose, what's what's the plan? What's the what's the plan for the I suppose the, the co next couple of weeks, or what's the plan for the foreseeable future on the farm more than anything? It's, it's interesting, yeah, because uh, I, I don't know whether it's like this, or you know, you know, when you get um, a retrospective on someone's career and they look back on not I'm not talking about me I'm talking about someone on telly or something like that someone mm -hmm. famous and you and they look back at their career line and they see what they've done they obviously didn't plan that at the start so you know, you know they've just become you know. famous of doing the lucky roles and stuff so my plan on YouTube there isn't one okay so I've never planned ahead well I do plan a little bit but I don't think what am I doing next year but I can tell you a few things that there are there are kind of like coming up so obviously the cows are going out and then also i'm hoping to possibly get um jack on the track to do a bit chain hiring this week if i've got Brilliant. time but as far as the future plans on the youtube channel i haven't thought deeply about this but because it's sort of it's always a bit dangerous to plan ahead but i'll tell you one thing right at the moment so i moved it back into the family farm as you can see it behind me um mm -hmm. At the moment, I'm busy doing renovation inside the farmhouse, which I don't film because I have to have a degree of separation from my private life to yeah. YouTube, I think. There's some things I keep separate. So the family house, people see it in the background. They might suddenly see a video and the colour, the curtains have changed, and I won't have said anything about that. Yeah. But I, so that takes up a lot of my spare time uh, in the evening. So, But what I'm thinking of in the future, in the evenings, is I would really like, to get myself a Massey Ferguson 35 tractor to do up. Yeah. How about that? That's an exclusive because the thing is, I've never talked about this before. Yeah. And there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. Okay. So, first, the first real reason is we used to have a Massey Ferguson 35 on this track on this farm. Right. So, when I was, when I grew up, we had a Massey Ferguson 35 with a loader. You know what Massey Ferguson 35 is? Yeah. Little red tractor, 1960s. Lovely little tractor. Um, and we had it here until about 2003. And what happened then, we bought a brand new McCormick. Mm -hmm. People have seen it on my videos. McCormick yeah. CX95 we bought with a loader, quickly loader. Really lovely, good tractor for yeah. us. And at that point, we thought, why are we keeping this old 35 tractor? It's just sitting in a shed. We don't use it very much. So we sold it. Okay. Didn't I, I didn't have any kids then or anything. And it was just a, you know, what we're going to do with it. So we sold it. And do you know what? I've looked back on that tractor and I regret we sold that now because 
it was a lovely little tractor. Now I've got two boys that are growing up. Harry particularly is quite interested in mechanics yeah. and um, he loves his model farm and toys and stuff. And I thought, do you know what? I think I'm going to have to buy one of those back. Partly because of the memories of having one on the farm. But I thought, you know, that would be a really nice project for me and the boys to do up. Yeah. Yeah, I think YouTube videos, people would love to watch that because people yeah. like those sort of videos. But, but it, it's not really about that so much. It's about the fact that I've got quite a nice relationship with my boys. You've probably seen them. As yeah. they're getting older, we're doing things together like the chickens. They love the chickens we've just got. Um, and I thought that's a great little dad and lad project, isn't it? Do yeah. a, a tractor. Yes. And then, do you know what? I, I'd love to drive it around a few places. Yeah. But that's got to, but the reason that I say that's the sort of future project is that I've really got to spend my time on the farmhouse at the moment. Uh, at the moment, I'm boarding a loft out, you know, and that takes ages just cutting yeah. the planks and the bits of work. So I haven't got time to do a project like that. Or if I did, I'd distract from the house and my wife would kill me. <laughs> I better rush to her life for a little bit longer. Yeah. So let's do the farmhouse. But I was sort of thinking maybe sort of, I don't know, three years' time, three years down the line when I finished sort of doing a lot of the work here. Yeah. And I reckon that'd be a lovely project, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. They're a beautiful little tractor. They're a beautiful little tractor. And we said, what? Would I love the, I love the old classic. Yeah, all for different. I love them. I absolutely love them. And what were the chances my phone going off here? What were the chances right. of um, you getting the original 35 back? I don't know. I, I'd have to see if I can find the number plate to start with. I'm not quite sure what number plate it was. You know, it's, when you got rid of it 17 years ago, I, I didn't think to write that down. I might have it somewhere on a photograph or something like yeah. that. So but can, I don't know where it is. Can we, can we put a... That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Can we put an appeal out here, for Richard, for this minute? Well, I don't know the number plate. We don't need to know the number plate. To find, if, you've got, if someone knows it, it would be registered as W. Cornock, Newhouse Farm, Tiverington, Gloucestershire. That's where it um, originally came from. So if anyone out that there... That would be watching, find that back. If anyone's out there watching yeah. this, Richard would love to get his tractor back. <laughs> I don't want the loader. <laughs> no, you can keep the loader. You can keep the loader because he just wants the tractor. Keep the loader. I don't need that. I just want the little red tractor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'll have to, I wonder where it went. I do wonder. It's probably not very far away. I'm sure it's still around because these tractors last forever, don't they? They do. They last forever. They're brilliant. I'm sorry to say it, but it will outlive your McCormack. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the beauty of these old tractors is that anyone can work on them with a spanner, can't they? Yeah. It's a little bit like Meccano. You can get, it's really brilliant. I love the fact that you can just go out there with simple tools and repair them. The problem with our McCormick and maybe the tractors that are even new in that is that most farmers can't touch them. No. You know, it's a laptop and a flipping lots of electronic components. And that's going to be a real problem in the future for any classic tractors because these tractors aren't going to be repairable like the, the old ones are. Yeah, I have a video there I recorded with a fellow in the States, Ron Harmon, and um, he speaks about, he does the big bud tractors, so big American tractors, but just the same, it's the same thing, it's just they're broke up with Ed Blue and everything else, and it's just it's just a nightmare, and he yeah. said, no, he told me some of the older tractors were actually becoming, were holding their value, some of the, we say the pre-1990 tractors, and I can believe that. I can well believe that if you've got one of the bigger earlier tractors, that a lot of people will maybe go back to that in the fact that, you know, there's a significant cost of getting a tractor maintained and serviced. And if you can't do it yourself, you know, because I, I try and do a bit of servicing myself. I can change an oil filter and stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, these bigger tractors, it's pretty hard to get on them and do anything yourself. You're talking to some fellow with a laptop for 150 euros an hour. That's... What it really yeah. Is like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary, isn't it? It's like like you have um one one of your videos up there. It's of um is it the one three five and you're they're doing the clutch in it? Do you know? That's right. I just did the clutch. Lovely little job that was. Yeah, it's a simple operation. It's just split it. None of the mm -hmm. new tractors will be that way. Yeah, I mean they split that tractor. I mean, admittedly, these little tractors aren't good on any modern big scale operation, but for, yeah. for what we need it for on the yard squeak, absolutely perfect. That's a 50-year-old one massive big one three five. 
So he split that, split it one day, took the old clutch out, got the new one and put it all back together on the farm. Very simple tools, very good job. And I've been using it since. Perfect. Flying, you know? Yeah. No, Lovely job. No laptop required. No laptop required. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Tell me, Richard, I suppose the other question I suppose a lot of people are wondering and when you are farming there, what size of an operation do you have or how big farm or what are you doing there? Yeah, sure. Well, we it's, it's a very small family farm. I, I mean, we're at the kind of smaller end of farming, if you like. We, we're about 130, 135 acres because we rent a few little fields. Mm -hmm. um, 135 acres, milking about 75 very basic operation. We're still milking through in the breast parlor with um, sort of on case of cubicles and stuff. It's a it's small scale, low input, low output. Um, and, you know, we're never going to be up there with the big guys. And, the, you know, we make a, a living, you know. Yeah. And to be honest, it suits me. I, I haven't got it in me to be a 300, 400 cow person. You know, that's not yeah. what I'm about. My brother milks the cows, mate. We run it together. We run quite a tight ship, so we, you know, we're two families supported on this farm, um, okay. and we do we I rent a couple of cottages out as well. Um, but we um, we work, you know, most of the labour is our own. I try and do as much of the work as I can myself. So you know, it's not an easy living on that scale yeah. because you know you, you've got to be really tight with your margins or whatever. But we are quite good at what we do in the fact that we kind of work and we well put it this way we're still here yeah yeah and we and we work we've worked our way through it all this time i mean it's a bit scary what's happening now with this loss of the single farm payment um mm -hmm. and you know the european subsidy and that change yeah. of that which is because of brexit we're doing I'm not quite sure what's going to happen about that because you've got to try and make that money up some other way. Yeah. Um, and I believe the UK government are trying to push it into more environmental projects, which I, I don't mind doing environmental projects because we are already involved with that. I'm, I'm in high level stewardship and entry level stewardship. It's whether they will be it will be enough to replace what we're going to lose on those yeah. schemes. Well, I suppose Richard, I, I'm my father's small town farmer and subsidies is part really and truthfully the farmer waits on every year but I thought the reality that's right. is, but it's not going to happen is the farm I know the, the farmer should be getting a better a better margin a better for his for his produce that's right 100 percent I mean I don't believe in subsidies because I think ultimately the farmer should be paid enough to make a proper living you know because if I look at our milk price it's not that different than it was 20 years ago well that's ridiculous yeah you know, and, and nothing else is like that. I don't go down to um, Tesco and go, oh, I'd like to pay what I bought, paid for this 20 years ago. Is that all right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't go to, um, I don't go and buy a pair of trousers and I'll, go, I'll give you what you what they were worth in 2000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean it's acceptable, yeah. is it? But it seems to be acceptable in farming terms. It <laughs> It does, yeah. It's like the fellow I spoke to yesterday, he told me he was going shearing his sheep. It's something like 90 sheep. It was three euros to shear a sheep. And I asked him, I said, how much will you get for the wool? And he said, oh, I'll probably get two euros. So it was going to cost really? him a euro to do That makes no sense. Right? It's, it's just wrong, just, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. wrong. No, 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 no. I, I look at it on our milk price and I see that... Um, there's always a constant battle with the milk buyers saying, oh, you know, whether you can put it up one P a litre or not. And I think to myself, well, if that pint of milk or litre of milk was in the supermarket and it was one P a litre more, the public wouldn't even notice that on their shopping. Sure. It's such a minuscule amount on the actual cost of that product. You know, they're happy to go into Tesco's and buy a sh go shopping and pick up some bottles of wine at a, six quid each or something or yeah. even a litre of water water is a classic if you go and buy a bottle of water i don't ever buy a bottle of water i can't bring myself to pay money for water but yeah um a bottle of water can be a quid for like yeah. half a pint and you think well you buy that but you you know they can't put one p on milk for to give the producer a fair price yeah there's something wrong there isn't there yes no there, there, there's something definitely wrong there without a shadow of a doubt and last time just when you go into places and you, if you, even if you go into a restaurant, milk is often the cheapest thing on the menu. 
Beverage yeah. wise. And yeah. one P is not going well, to. Well, it goes into producing water, uh, sorry, milk is massive compared with water, isn't yes, it? Yeah, water, you drill a hole in the ground and it comes up. It should be fairly <laughs> straightforward, I would have thought. It's not too much of a rare commodity. No, 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 no. I'm sure there'll be arguments against that from the water. Oh, there will be, yeah. well. there'll be some for that, even the comments. <laughs> mm. Richard, that's kind of it. I can't think of any more questions. We could we could talk all night, and we could talk about tractors and cars and cows and farming and everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Anyone that this that doesn't know you're there, get onto your YouTube channel. It's um, Funky Farmer. And yeah, um, you know, it's been really nice to speak to you, Morgan. I really appreciate you uh, contacting me. I don't get asked to do many interviews. Do a bit of radio occasionally, but um. You've been a real star. You've been a really good interviewer. I really, you know, straight to I, the point, I really good. I don't know about that, but thank you very much. No, thank you. Like I said, I reached out to you and you came back to me straight away. And I just, I'm relatively new to all of this. So hopefully well, you're doing a great job. I back don't... on, as they say, or as I say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our compliments greatly appreciated. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, mate. Richard, thank you. Thanks very much. How are you doing, guys? That was Richard Carnock, the funky farmer. Richard, brilliant. Thank you very, very much for giving me the time and coming on here with me. Um, I suppose, what can I say to you? Get on. Look up his channel if you're not on it already. Um, the funky farmer. Brilliant. Richard covers everything from, I suppose, the clutch on a 135 to uh, putting a chicken coop together to chickens. Uh, his son has a fantastic um, display of model tractors and a model farm. He covers everything from silage making to the cows running out in the field. It's just a day-to-day -day life of um, a dairy farm. Brilliant. And I suppose for myself, get on there, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and um, hopefully we have more of the same. We have plans for the future for a couple of friends of mine have tractors, and we're going to get out there and look at their display of tractors and so on and so forth. Um, like that, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Share, tell a friend, do whatever you have to do. And um, that's it. Brilliant. Thanks very much for watching. And um, we'll hopefully have more. Cheers. Bye now. Thank you. Period. Well, great.